I want to do is say that there's office and all other. Office is getting okay. hit by a cyclic pullback, especially the tech tenants pulling back, okay. and by secular problems because of work from home. So it is materially worse than any other property type. Yep. Um, the other property types while dealing with the cycle also have secular lift, and we can talk about that. Okay. Um, right now, office is really struggling, and the capital markets have pulled back, and yep. most of what's going on in real estate is a capital market pullback. So, mm. but also retail, right? I mean, um, we've heard a few cases of malls, and you're from San Francisco, where um, you know the owner just says, "We're out, we're done," like Westfield did out out at that retail center, right? So just like um, Office is getting hit by technology change because Zoom and Teams let us work from home, ten or fifteen years ago, real estate got hit by e-commerce. That was a while ago. Since then, the tenants have figured it out. We've all figured out what formats work and don't work. And the formats that work have repriced and are really interesting to investors. Some of these malls are the ones that don't and are largely pushed out of the institutional portfolios and not really where the focus is. The focus is on things like industrial and multifamily that have a lot of lift right now that are pretty interesting. And you can use this period of turmoil to find good entry points and opportunity. All right. So for the areas or just broadly defined you know commercial real estate given where rates have moved this year how does that impact your businesses like on a residential side nothing's trading nobody wants to sell their house what's it like on the commercial side homes are not trading that means more people are pushed and capped back in the rental market okay. so if you own rental properties it's actually a pretty good time um it's slowing because it's vulnerable to the cycle but the outlook is good and similarly for industrial which is benefiting from e-commerce and it's benefiting from globalization so what we really have is a capital markets correction so prices are going down balance sheets are restructuring people new loans are smaller than old loans so people need recapitalization money what we call gp led secondaries is one way to do it to actually keep their assets and they're desperate for that money because the difference is a goose egg so there's a really good time to deploy capital into some of these interesting strategies really which puts uh stepstone i guess in a good position right or um what what do you do at stepstone you offer uh private investors access to markets that the public doesn't see or yes are, we, yeah. we design uh portfolios uh for institutional large institutional and high, private wealth clients um, that are designed to improve the odds of meeting their specific portfolio goals. And that's what I focus on particularly. And then that includes taking advantage of market opportunities. And then we also execute. We help them find and vet transactions. So where are you guys putting capital to work these days? Our favorite strategy right now is this GP-led, this recapitalization, where you've got an owner who needs to buy down his existing loan and is desperate for money to keep his asset. So um, that, that they will pay a lot for that transitional money and not everything's savable so over time a lot of, there will be motivated sales and distressed sales that are also going to be are we seeing that yet uh, we're at the leading edge uh, we're definitely seeing in our book transactions that look like the immediate post gfc period which you know ended up yielding very attractive so, so what are some what are properties trading at today again if that lipstick building trades today what do you what discount do you think that trades at commercial so, real estate on third avenue in midtown Every property is different. That's the, that's the tricky part of commercial real estate. Um, the property pricing indexes are down a little over 20%, um, and trading is down about 40%. So it's a little bit slower and not full price discovery. Office yeah, that, is that, completely different. Okay. Though. Office is what's really not trading, yep. and it's really broken. So you like, uh, where are you finding the distressed what will look like distressed opportunities. I mean, you're not looking in office, I'm guessing, or Correct. do you, or yeah. will you if they say, hey, this is 70% off? Right now, we're not seeing that pricing is interesting enough because there's too much uncertainty. Employers and employees are in a big experiment on hybrid work, and we don't know what that means for demand or for leases yet. So it is too So for office, it's just a falling knife that no one, almost no one's willing to catch right now. Institutional buyers are not going into office right now in any numbers. I can't wait to see that. At some it, it, point, it's going to be a just. A, I would think huge it. haircut. Yeah, and it's but what a great you're buy. saying if is, I can go by the lipstick building. At, I have no idea what you know, like at thirty cents on a dollar. It's got to be a great deal, right? Yeah, I mean, I would, at I some point, but I don't know what that number is. That's why I'm, I'm not in that business. It's the same <laughs> as any asset when right. there are no buyers, right? It's right. in free fall, and you've got to have the. I guess the courage or the yes. stupidity yes. to go in there and try and catch it. But what what you're saying, Margaret, is that um, you're, there's a shift in capital interest, right? They're more interested in multifamily. They're more interested in, I'm guessing, like server 
uh, warehouses, farms, industrial warehouses, warehouses is yeah. a big part of it because there's a huge shift in how people are using space right now. Um, instead of working at the office, we're working from home, we're shopping from home, we're playing at home. So that creates more demand on the residential side. And then also the warehouses, you know, hold all the goods that come in for the shopping and are really winning on the deglobalization front, which, like you said, server farms, data centers and whatnot are also big. So th there's sectors in the market that have really interesting fundamentals. And if you could use this moment to buy at a discount, it, you know, good opportunities ahead. Now, can I, but can I get a can I get capital to do that? Can I get a loan to do that? Will, a bank, um, are, will banks lend to me? So yes, banks are lending to their, their best customers. Um, you can also restructure your existing loans. And again, that's where this recap strategy comes in that we think is so interesting. Um, as I said, trading value is down 40%. It's not down 100%. And it's way higher than it was during the GFC period. So, so there is still movement. There is a lot of, um, especially if you're trying to sell office, it needs to be seller finance because there's no debt for office. No debt for office. Wow. Okay. Seller financed. Me, yeah, I don't like that. That's a <laughs> scary. You know, I, uh, I want to sell you this thing so badly that I'm going to lend you the money to buy it from me. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I've seen that before in other businesses. Um, so, again, do you feel like, where do you feel like we are just in, it, I guess it's really by the asset class, right? I mean, it, like I was going to say, are we at the bottom here? But in certain sectors, we've already bottomed and are trading higher, but for office, maybe not there yet. For non-office, we're at the beginning of probably a two to three year restructuring period that should yield some very interesting, as I said, opportunities to help people restructure um, as we move through the business cycle and we come out the other side. You know, the, the motto now is stay alive till 25. Stay alive till 25. Um, <laughs> that's not true for office. And I think the office is more like, I alluded to retail was a 10 to 15 year correction. I think office is more like a 10 year because tenants have to figure out their demands there's long-term leases that need to yep. roll off and it's going to take a while wow let's talk quickly about san francisco that's where you live paul and i think both love the love city i it. think it's beautiful i love the humphrey and slocum ice cream place mm -hmm. i'm a deadhead so i like to go around hate ashbury you know and check out the scene there um i never really hung out in the industrial like commercial center very much but apparently it's dead what, what do you think is it is the you know um are, are the death uh, um, stories about San Francisco overblown, overwritten? The Bay Area is the center to the biggest and most important tech ecosystems in the world. I am not going to bet against San Francisco at all, and it's a fabulous place to live. Still, you still enjoy living there. Yes, and remember, we don't all live. We don't live downtown. That's yep, part of the problem. Right. Office key card use says um, use office use in New York is 50%. Office use in San Francisco is 45%. You just feel it because yeah. there's um, it's more concentrated and the tourism is not back there. And here you have integrated uses, so it feels lively. 